John Miller joins us now. He is the Deputy Commissioner of Intelligence and Counterterrorism for the New York Police Department. He's also our former senior correspondent here. John, good morning. Good morning. First, the general picture here uh, of what's going on between police uh, and young African Americans in one case. And is it nothing new? It's just simply we're photographing it now. I think it's a combination of the two. Um, you know, this is a, a nation where you have 18,000 police departments with 850,000 police officers uh, that make 11.3 million arrests uh, just last year across the country, which is actually a, a low figure. Uh, you've got 500,000 violent crimes. Uh, but when you have these encounters, and you know, a moment of that is collected on videotape and it's played over and over again, particularly in a community where there is tension, uh, these become flashpoints. And um, I think while they're blown out of proportion in some instances, they become flashpoints because they're speaking to a larger tension mm -hmm. um, in those communities. It you, calls for, I think, the conversation that is starting is, um, even where we're doing it right, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, there needs to be a new model of policing uh, where the relationship changes, uh, particularly in those high crime communities. But right now all the focus is, is on Baltimore and Freddie Gray. Do you think, John, we'll ever know what really happened here? It, it seems to be if we'd had cameras on the police from the very beginning, we would have a better understanding of what happened and when it happened. I, I certainly think if there were body cameras deployed on those officers, getting to those, so to, to take that question apart, yes, I think we'll eventually know mm -hmm. what happens. Uh, the nature of an investigation is they're not operating on deadline and they're not, they're not going against competitors, so they're not going to investigate it the way you all would cover it. They're going to be methodical and it's going to take longer than anybody wants. Had there been body cameras, that could be speeded up because they would have one more mm -hmm. source of information. Um, about what happened. And I think the direction we're going in this country um, is that you'll see more and more body cameras and more and more police departments because for the police officer, while everybody else is videotaping their actions uh, on the street, that's a camera that's facing out. So it's going to capture their point of view of what happened. And I think um, it's going to be very helpful in a case like this where you have those gaps. And of course, we learned that the Justice Department has announced that they're going to spend $20 million on a program to get body-worn cameras to departments throughout the country. So things are going to change pretty quickly. Well, it's going to ch they're going to change quickly, but there's going to be a learning curve here. Yeah. You can't just drop body cameras on police departments with a, a figure even as low as $20 million and figure out <clears throat> how are we going to store all those videos, what are, the, what are the policies around it. It'll be complicated, but at the end of the day, it's going to help in many different ways. I want to go back to, the, to Baltimore and Freddie Gray because he was arrested for possession of a switchblade, and then he ended up paralyzed and dead. We just released this, got this preliminary report from the police department about um, what, what happened inside this van, and they're calling it a rough ride. And this is a tactic, I guess it is, known in several police departments. What does that mean? I've been around policing um, either as a journalist or working in police departments uh, on and off for more than a decade for a long time, and uh, I've never heard of that. Um, Never of a rough ride of something that they do to, to, to suspects when they're inside the van on the way to the precinct? I, I can't make it up, Nora. Yeah. I've never heard of it. Yeah. Um, now, on the other hand, you know, I know about police brutality. I know about a rough encounter during an arrest. Um, I know about, you know, we all know the Louima stories, what can happen uh, back in the cell block. Um, does that mean it didn't happen? No, it doesn't. That's going to be part of the investigation. But I, I can't, I can't speak to it as a common practice. Yeah, I guess I was just say, so to button this up, Police officers and departments around the country are taking a close look at what's happening and saying, guys, let's, let's, let's be very careful about what we're doing on the streets. Those conversations are definitely going on. I know they go on all the time. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have to step back on that one because I think um, in a dedication where everybody shows up uh, to work every day, uh, sworn to protect yeah. and serve, uh, taking a life is a terrible contradiction. Uh, I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and says, we're going to lump some people up and maybe kill a guy today. It's not, the, it's not the nature of the police officers I know. Now, when you have 850,000 people, are there going to be people who are better or worse? Uh, are there going to be the bad apples? There certainly are. There certainly will be. Uh, but I don't think that's a pall across the profession. All right, John Miller, thank you.